So do you believe we came from nothing or something? From something. Convince us in terms of your thinking. Remember, we want to learn from each other so that the shared information will lead us to be a better human being. So, like when you think about like where you came from, where this universe came from. Is who is more God conscious, righteous and pious, meaning someone who is more in line with doing the purpose that you are created for, fulfilling the right of God and the right of human beings and so on and so forth. That's the difference. So you may be someone who is so rich and I may be someone so poor. We have no difference. I can stand with you praying to God side by side, making no difference to me. Okay? In fact, if you go and see the congregational prayer of the Muslims, a cleaner is leading the prayer behind all the emirs and rich people and then the sheikhs and a cleaner in the street. A cleaner who's what we call super mm -hmm. because of his righteousness and his learned learn, learning about his religion, about God fearing and so on, because he can recite the word of God. So Islam is what we come to discuss to, to break that barrier. And what we'll do when we break this barrier and, and we the bridge becomes shorter and shorter in terms of understanding and coexistence. Tolerance. We will be now living side by side. You'll be my next door neighbor and I'll visit you, you know, and, and you may be a, an atheist or a Jew or a Christian. It's that kind of knowledge that is missing from us. Okay. So what are you? I mean, I mean I've been talking about what we believe in, what we talk about here. This is what happens in the speaker's corner, and you will see people are recording you left, right, and center. Camera yeah. also come all over you, and you have a garland. Um, what do you believe? Do you believe in anything in, in terms of the existence in this world? Believe something. Something. What about yourself? Oh no, it's something. You're an atheist, but your your something means you're agnostic or you're a theist, meaning there is a creator of this universe. I don't know, probably just looked in the shadows, probably, I don't know. But there's something that made this universe? Is that what you're thinking? Well, there's got to be something. something. Got to be something means you're positively sure. So you're not just like on the first, like, I don't know. Because when you say you've got to be something, that's what we say. There has to be something. We can have a discussion with you, maybe you can, you can share with us. But what about you, young lady? What about yourself? Bit of everything. Hmm? Bit of everything. Bit of everything? So do you believe we came from nothing or something? Something. Something. Yeah. So we all have something in common. Excellent. But the gentleman here, what's your name? Uh, Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us, why do you believe you're an atheist? I don't know. All right. <laughs> I mean, convince us in terms of your thinking. Remember, we want to learn from each other so that the shared information will lead us to be a better human being. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. I just take things from everything, make out my own sort of. Ideas on stuff, yeah. So, do you believe there was nothing at one point, or there was always something? I don't know. It's hard to know. What, what do you have to say about this something and nothing? Because there's a, philosophically, there is an important distinction to make here. When we study about something and nothing, you'll be surprised. Even the thing about something and nothing can lead us to this very question about whether there is a creator or, or, or originator of our universe. So, you know, interestingly. The Quran gives you kind of like a philosophical or rational dialogue. It says in Arabic, "Am min ghairi shay'in am humul khaliqun," which means, "Were they did they come from nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves?" So, like when you think about like where you came from, where this universe came from, does it like when you really think about it, does it make sense to you that you know absolute nothingness, which means like the absence of anything and everything, could have brought about something, let alone all of this cosmos. What do you think about that? I think there might be something, but also it's just a little unknown. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm completely okay with you saying you don't know, but I just want to like ascertain whether you want to say that, because atheism, you're saying like, no, there's, and, and you said earlier, it's like, you could, it could be nothing. So I was trying to see like, do you actually think that we could have come from absolutely nothing? What do you mean absolute nothing? Maybe Absence of everything. So we're not talking about quantum fluctuations, vacuum, nothing, black holes. This is all something. So we're talking about absence of everything. Could the absence of everything give us anything, let alone everything we do have? Like, does that gel well with you? I don't know. I'm 
have to do, you know, really develop an opinion on it, really. Okay. Um, I don't know. So, so then my question is, why would you, why did you say that you're an atheist? Because see, some of your friends were like, like she said, for example, I'm like here, a bit here, a bit there. Um, your other friend said that they believe in something, but you said you're like, atheism is quite a strong position is why I'm asking. All right, I'm going to just say that at the point that I'm not, and I'm not anything in particular. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't really say that I'm one thing or another, so I kind of just go, what's the, the neutral one, you know? Okay, so that's more agnostic then. You're not an atheist. Yeah. Because an atheist is somebody who like actively and positively claims that a god does not exist and then maybe would argue for why that is. They would give you arguments from evil, arguments from bad design, whatever it is. Like they would give you arguments for why they think absolutely a god does not exist. So it seems like that's not you. No, not really. Okay. So let me give you just an example about nothing. If I have a, I have a, I have a wallet and if I have no money, no money whatsoever, pence, dollars, cents, whatever you want, no checks, no credit cards, no money, absolutely no money. I have so no friends. Like I have no friends to borrow money from. I have no banks. No one. Can I give you five pounds? Uh, no. Why not? Because you don't have it. Okay. So if there was nothing to begin with, can the universe come from it? Uh, I guess not. Cannot. Just like you, you can't give me five pounds, the universe couldn't just come from nothing because it's just there. It's the absence of everything. So, if you have absolute nothingness, absence of fluctuation, quantum fields, gravitational fields, quanta, hadrons, leptons, if you are in, in, in some of physics, you realize if, if you have absence of all of that, then something which is energy or matter, we are something, right? Energy, matter, we into convertible. It cannot come from this absolute nothingness. So, what that means is if we are something now, there has to be always something. Always something. Either the universe has always been there, that's it, you don't need a creator for it. Or the originator was always there that brought into this, the, the whole cosmos into existence. So you can believe in this material universe which has always been there because that makes sense that something has to be always there. Or something, what we say is the originator of our universe, creator, God of this universe. God is a very loaded term. so. I would, don't want to use this term because you might want to think God of the Bible, God of this. Originator, someone who originates. So you have broadly these two options. I mean, you can believe in either of them, but we can analyze which one seems to be more rational, making more sense. Because if you have a universe which is not conscious, doesn't have a will, doesn't have self-awareness, can it do anything? Think about it, if you had all the ingredients of a recipe sitting on a kitchen counter, you just left it there for a thousand years, do you think eventually, you know, with the passage of time, the recipe will make itself just because all the ingredients are there? Oh, it needs an agency. It needs an agency. Yes. A personal maker. This is what we do. This is, what this is how we engage with each other so that we can rekindle our intellect that is sort of being suppressed by a lot of social conditioning they tell you watch this matrix or that movie and that movie and be happy go to the cinema eat this wear this and don't worry about life and that's it but we are actually human beings with faculty of intellect where we are going to mars and elsewhere not monkeys or elephants or other things right we seem to be the pinnacle of all every other creation species of creation there's something different about us so if we were to think that because we have this faculty of intellect in which we decipher between falsehood and true, right and wrong, and many other things we distinguish between them, then why are we not talking about why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? What's going to happen if I die? Is that just, that's it? The worm's going to come and eat us and that's it? You know? So if you think about this, you realize that the material universe could not have transformed into all that we see here today, with all this beautiful harmony and complexity and wondrous assembly. This tree, for example, here is a wondrous assembly of information that then manifests into reality, like how the water, defying gravity, goes up from the root 
Because of defying gravity, because of capillary suction, because of the engineering. But if that piece of thing wasn't engineered as such, it would not suck the water up to the top of the tree because of this precise assembly of information that makes this particular piece a very wonderful design. So, a material universe which has no self-awareness, doesn't even know that it exists, it cannot assemble anything. You can't have a good a pizza or pasta, whatever you like, um, in your kitchen if you have all the ingredients. It's just simply not going to happen. It makes sense there's a personal agency or an agency with self-awareness, intentionality. A will. Intentionality. And not only that, with knowledge and power or energy. Because without knowledge and power, you can't make anything, you can't transform anything. So, if you now think about it, to believe in an originator of all our reality, originated by a very powerful entity, which is self-aware, which has intentionality of will, you're more and more in lining with the belief in a creator God, a creator of this universe. We say this is in line with our natural self, our our makeup, our intellect, if it's sound and not totally suppressed and brainwashed or brain dead for some people, um, we would come to this realization that there is an absolute independent, self-sufficient agency that has brought about all of these things. Have you heard about something called like things are dependent on each other? Like, can you stop breathing the air and try to live? Yeah. You will die after 10 minutes, right? Because we're so much dependent on air and oxygen, water, food, and so on. So we, or if you think about it, not just human beings, everything around you, we are dependent. We are not self-sufficient. If you now start adding dependent things, the collection of dependent things in the whole universe... Brother Hashim. Oh, okay, yeah, because Brother Mansur doesn't have a camera. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, it's okay, Sam. So, dependent things in totality has to, by necessity, depend on something that is called a necessary existence. Something that has to necessarily exist and will be self-sufficient. So our originator will be necessary in its existence and self-sufficient and independent. I want to share you this something that we as Muslims, you know when we read a guidance from our originator, this is what in three or four lines the originator communicates with us and you tell me whether it makes sense or not. We believe in the Quran. Entity in which everyone depends on. So one and only self sufficient, not himself or itself brought into existence, not born, doesn't give birth or doesn't produce offspring, and no, nothing like unto it. Does that make sense? Yeah. That reason, yeah. Yeah, this concept will make sense to you. And this is what the Quran, the final, not the first guidance from God. The final guidance in a succession of so many prophets and messengers from this creator originator through the final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came to tell us about who our originator is. That he is God, Allah, and this is the description of this chapter. Your heart and your mind will be synced with it. You would not disagree with it because you know, yes, it makes sense. And the Quran describes more about this being, which you are thinking, if something that exists always didn't have a beginning. I mean, I had a beginning, you had a beginning. But our originator didn't have a beginning, always existed. What would be his qualities and characteristics? What would be the properties? The Quran describes that and also at the same time tells us why 
this creator made us. If you make something, you don't, like this phone isn't just made to, to dig, you know, mud. There's a, reason. There's a reason for it, right? It comes with a manual. Yeah. We are made for a reason. Where's our manual? Where were we here? Yeah? So, if we have just given you some food for thought to think into Islam, looking into the life of this last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Quran being the guidance from this originator, open up, read, scrutinize, read to, if you want, to verify it. So verifying it, you'd read with scrutiny and say, let me just check whether it's indeed from this originator or not. I mean, I can disprove it if it's not. If it is from this creator, I should be able to see guidance from it. Look for this guidance with a sincere heart. And if you find that it makes sense to you, it tells you that this book, at the very beginning of this book, it says, this is such a book. This had it in 12 chapters. First chapter is like an introduction of this Quran. Look, the second chapter says, this book, there is no doubt in it, is a guide to those who guard against evil. Absolutely, without a doubt, there's guidance in it. The book tells you there's guidance in it. So what you need to know is, how do I achieve or read or verify this guidance? So there's a lot of things you can look into this book, which will give you positive evidence for its divine origin. Anyone come and say, Harry Potter is the book of God, believe in it. Harry Potter, you'll be surprised. Yeah, anyone can come back. The Quran gives you positive evidence for you to be satisfied. Like, you know, your, your thoughts about like, there's so many ideas and ideologies, you know, how do I know there's a creator or not? You know, your position on you agnosticism. The there, there has to be some evidence to satisfy and convince you. Yeah, and not just evidence that satisfies the mind, also satisfies the heart. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a lot of people will just believe things that make them feel good. But then if they think about it too hard, it starts messing with their head. And then they're like, oh, well, let's just, just think, think it's a mystery it. and let's not think about it. It just feels really good to have this faith, etc. Yeah, yeah. That's not good for your own term. Because eventually you'll have these thoughts always creep up, those pillow last thoughts before you sleep. So it's really important that you find something that satisfies your mind and uh, sorry, your heart and your mind. And at the same time, gives you some form of like good uh, practical um, you know, guidance that has some utility in your life. You know what I mean? Like, what's the point of believing things and it's completely useless for your life? Like, uh, it, we're not talking now about a book that we believe is some old book that has no relevance to us today. In fact, we think that it's a book that has been made in such a way that uh, it's perfect for all times and that it, it has a, uh, a meaning and has a importance in our lives and an applicability in our lives always. I get it. That makes sense. And you know, it's also interesting that why these conversations are really important is because we have uh, a belief in this thing called the fitra, which is our natural disposition. And uh, the natural disposition is our, our innate uh, uh, natural disposition to recognize our creator. And unfortunately, in the 21st century, we live in a time where our, the capitalist materialist lifestyle, which we're uh, submerged under, its main focus is to rid us of any kind of existential purpose and actual meaning for our lives. We just focus on how to. All sorts of religion have been sort of started to abolish a lot more in this more recent. Sorry. Set. Like all sorts of religion have been started to be abolished in all this new century nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, and it was replaced with a different religion, though. So Which the religion is, of capitalism, the religion the, of the hustle and bustle. Uh, yes, actually, absolutely, the rat race of how you can be a positive a member of the economy, how you could produce more wealth for the 1%. Yeah. It's, it's just not about you anymore. It's not about what your purpose of life is. It's not about how you live the best life for your life here and then your afterlife. It's about how to get the most out of you before you croak. Yeah, yeah. So now what we see, what these conversations, what they do is they reignite your fitra. Like we believe that the, the fitra, your natural disposition can be cloaked when you're around, uh, when you get socialized, your primary, your secondary socialization. So once you get, once your fitra gets cloaked, it's these conversations that start uncovering your fitra, your innate disposition to want to recognize your creator. This is not just a, a Muslim be a belief, by the way. Um, people like Justin Barrett have done studies at Oxford University, have done studies about human beings in atheistic and secular environments and children, uh, that is, and their belief, their innate belief to recognize a creator. So even atheist secular academics recognize that 
uh, human beings aren't born atheists. They they are born with this innate disposition to recognize something greater than they, they are. Have, they have the curtains closed after a few years because everyone else. Yes, sir. They have the curtains closed around them, so the ideologies are put on them. Yes, exactly. Through their socialization, what happens is they're born into families that believe all sort of things. They are then to go. They go to schools that these schools are meant to produce workers. They're meant to produce people who are good economy, uh, what's it called, positive people, and anything that is not have a dollar amount attached to it, don't worry about it. God, that's opium for the masses. But you know what isn't opium for the masses? Working nine to five shifts until you croak. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it keeps everybody in line. Everybody does the same thing. It's the rat race. You go work for five days a week and then you go drink. Um, and try to you know keep yourself uh, this, this is a level of escapism that you need from your life that you have no meaning and no um, uh, what's it called that happiness and contentness that you would get if you actually reattach yourself with the purpose that your creator gave you. Yeah, I get you. Oh, so, 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 take care, take care. Yeah, yeah, no Thank you, though. Take care, guys. See you. Take care. Bye, Allah. And also, uh, I accidentally said made. The Quran was revealed to us, of course, not made. So, excuse me for the mistake. Should have corrected it before, but I just remembered as well. So, obviously, that is what we believe.